Greetings YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to get some Michelin Anarchy Wilds fitted to the bike in readiness for my Wild Atlantic Way trip. First I've got to give it a wash because it's absolutely filthy after I took it down a byway to demonstrate the GoPro in the last video. So let's have it. that was four pounds well spent and obviously I kept away from wheel bearings and stuff like that go and load the tires up on the bike now and then go on to get them fitted when I bought the GSA about almost a year ago it had these Michelin Anarchy Adventures on it now I've been really pleased with these tires on road they feel really sure footed even in the rain if you saw my um, footage going down to the south of France and indeed coming back um, it was horrendous and at no point ever did the bike feel unstable, really good. Uh, I've certainly found in loose sand the front end is very light and, and jittery. So with the Wild Atlantic Way trip coming up in just, just about a week's time now, I figured that it would be time to try something else, especially as at the last service uh, the, the BMW dealership told me that I had about a thousand miles left in my rear tyre. Um, and that was probably 600 miles ago now. So I've acquired these. These are um, Michelin Anarchy Wilds, as you can see, very different tread pattern. These are quite aggressive knobblies. Um, obviously, they're not going to be quite as secure on the road, I'm sure. But what I'm going to do is uh, get them fitted, have breakfast while they're being fitted, and then I will uh, take them, find a byway and take them off-road, see what they feel like and also give you my opinion for what it's worth of what they feel like on the road. Um, I need to bed them in, etc. Right, let's get a, go and get these uh, fitted. First of all, I've got to get them onto the bike. Making this up as I go along. I don't think that's going anywhere. Yeah, that's going to be fine. Right, new tyres for the GSA and breakfast for me away. Okay, so I'm on my way to Wilf Churchill's Motorcycles in Pottersbury, which is a, a little village just north of Milton Keynes. They usually look after my bikes, various Harveys I've had and other bikes over the years. Strangely enough, when this, was, this GSA was due for a service just a little while ago, they didn't want to do it. So uh, I had to take it to the main BMW dealership, which was quite expensive. Um, but obviously they did a good job but they're up for swapping the tyres over on this bike today they said it would take about an hour there's probably some of you out there groaning and thinking well why isn't he doing it himself with a, a rusty spoon and uh, a twig or something like you would out in the middle of nowhere but I don't, I don't have those skills if I was to try and change these tyres for for you all by myself it would be like a 40 part series and then many of the episodes would be on fixing all the bits that I broke so I know my limits anyway I first uh, had dealings with this particular motorcycle dealership or garage back in 1977 when I was eight years old and my dad took me as a surprise to their establishment which at the time this bike go past which at the time was uh, operating from a farm and uh, 
they now have uh, far swankier premises and he took me all the way out into the middle of nowhere into the countryside as a surprise visit to buy my very first bike which was like a field bike obviously being eight years old and there was two to choose from there was a Yamaha DT50 and this Gorelli step through 50cc moped we couldn't afford the Yamaha as much as I desperately wanted it so um, it was the Gorelli that I got instead but oh my word that was the start of a lifetime love of motorcycles I've been craving one for so long beforehand um, and that was my very first bike which I rode around until it fell to, piece, it fell to pieces and then uh, after that I think it was a Honda SS50 that I had let's get out of this guy's way looks like my Land Rover but it's not And uh, yeah, what can I say? I've been riding bikes ever since. And it's always been a complete joy. Right, let's see if they can get these tyres done. They said they would, so I'd be very disappointed if for some reason they can't. Right, that's the bike safely dropped off, so hopefully there'll be no problems. We asked a couple of times whether it was TPS or not, and obviously it is. He said it's not a problem, so fingers crossed. After a nice breakfast at the Super Sausage Cafe, I will uh, come back to a nice set of knobbly tyres on the bike, and then we'll go and find a byway somewhere, and we'll test them out and see what they're like. Having just washed the bike, it will probably be completely filthy again, and I'll need to wash it again. Now I have, I have about, I don't know, half my walk to get to this cafe. So in my microbike boots, it's going to be uncomfortable. Never mind, we'll get it done. Right, we're almost there. So I've actually brought you to this cafe quite a few times on the hope that I would catch a busy Sunday morning and it would be absolutely teeming with bikes. There's usually hundreds here. But every time I've come, everybody stayed at home because the weather's been rubbish. And obviously it's uh, in the middle of the week now. So I would guess it's empty. There might be a few cars, vans maybe. We'll find out in just a second. So this place has been around as long as Wolf Churchill's motorcycles. Um, as long as I can remember. And it seems to be an open reach convention today. Hopefully, it won't take forever to get served, but I've got an hour to kill, so it's all fine. I'm certainly hungry. As I said before, I'm a vegetarian, so it's a bit tricky eating here. is very good. of a byway to see what they're like on the dirt. 
and also feedback to what they seem to be like on the road. Obviously, I've got to go careful because they're new. Okay, right, so the first good thing to report is I must have ordered the correct size because they're on. I did just follow what it said in the manual and double checked with the tyres that are already on the bike. There's a very nice stingray. So I'll be curious to see just what these feel like, whether there's suddenly a whole load of whether there's suddenly a whole load of vibration when I'm on the road. I don't think it'll be too bad, it's not like they're out and out enduro tyres or motocross tyres. I will be taking it quite careful to start with because it's probably feel a little bit different. I'm right, going to head back past the Super Sausage, out beyond Toaster into the Northamptonshire countryside. And there is a byway that I've got in mind, which is usually quite muddy. It's usually shut over the winter months and open, I think, 1st of May to end of October, something like that. So I'll go and see if it's open. If it's not, then there's always the byway that I shot the open sequence for Two Wheel Dreamer in, which is just like a sandy, sandy area. But we've been there a few times, so let's check something new out. And just uh, reading up the road a little way, I can definitely feel they feel different. Certainly when I'm cornering, uh, there's a bit more road noise, a tiny bit more vibration on the handlebars. Whether that would get annoying on a 13-hour motorway slog or not, I don't know. But we'll find out soon enough. Um, what I do like, though, is the look of them. I know that's not, not that important, but aesthetically, I think a set of fairly aggressive knobbly tyres on a big adventure bike is aesthetically perfect. Well, it took me a while, but I found a byway in the end. The road I would normally take to get to this one, I believe, was shut. So uh, it took me quite a while, but we're here anyway. And so far I can report that they feel pretty good in the mud. Um, the front end certainly isn't slipping around as much as when I had the Anarchy Adventures on. So they certainly seem to be doing their job so far. On road, the um, Anarchy Wilds feel different. They don't feel unsure, they just feel slightly different. They feel like they want to turn into the corners a little bit more. It's probably just my imagination, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to continue on down this byway, take you with me for a while, see how it feels, and then, and then I will conclude. Okay, let's get back to it. See where I've been. So yeah, these definitely feel a bit, a bit grippier, as you would expect, because we've got some nobbles that are actually digging into this mud. Although to be fair, it's not quite as muddy as I thought it was going to be here. We've had a lot of rain in the last week or two, and uh, I expected this to be a complete mud bath, and it may well be in places yet, but so far, not so bad. I haven't even bothered to take the GS out of road mode. I'm not going to be looking to spin the wheel or any of that stuff. I just want to work my way along this track and see if it feels a little bit more sure-footed than the Anarchy Adventures did. And I can already say it does. So, so far they're doing exactly what I'd expect. There's a little bit more vibration when I'm on the road. Um, I don't feel quite as confident going around a corner on the road, but that's probably just my imagination more than anything else and uh, it feels certainly a bit more sure-footed here off-road 
this is the furthest I've been along this byway so I uh, don't actually know where it goes which is quite nice nice Northamptonshire countryside I'm loving it It's so nice that the sun's out as well. So it's mid-May. Spring has finally arrived. It took a while. I think I've just had a fly or a wasp or something go into my helmet. I may have to stop. I don't know. We'll see if it gets itself out. Highway. I'm guessing we're still this direction. So at the moment this is very very gentle green lane and I'm hoping that when I'm doing the Wild Atlantic Way with my son Ben in a week's time that we find some lanes like this. I don't want anything any more adventurous than this really. This is plenty. It's just nice to get away from the traffic. So a very slow poodle along here. At least I'm christening my new tyres. Don't even know how long this byway is. I haven't looked on a map. I've only ever ridden probably half a mile of it before when it was really, really muddy. And that was on the wrong tyres, so is much more like it. Some ruts coming up, I'm going to take it slowly, I don't want to have any silly accidents. Back wheel sliding a little bit there. That's okay. Take it nice and slowly along here. I'm always very aware that this isn't a Honda CRF 300. There's a lot more weight to be manoeuvring around. And those ruts are pretty deep. Obviously the 4x4s have been along here. As you would expect, I've managed to put the bike in neutral. What I don't want to do is get cross rutted. Hopefully it looks a bit more civilised now. Have a look and see what's going on. Okay, we're getting to the end of it, obviously, as it's saying about the restrictions from October to April inclusive. Well, we're in May now, so we're perfectly all right. And I was in the wrong gear. This is what comes when you're talking to camera. You don't concentrate as much. I'm always very wary when I'm by myself and uh, off-road. I wouldn't want to end up trapped under the bike, but my partner knows where I am, so she could come and rescue me if need be in our discovery. bit wet here now 
Right, I think what I'm going to do, given how wet that looks, is turn around, if I can, and uh, make my way back. Because it wasn't too bad going back. I don't know where this ends up, but I don't want to get stuck. I really don't. So I'm going to try and spin it around here, if I can. Looks fairly flat. nearly stuck <laughs> okay right different plan then all right maybe I will be trying to go through try up here right, that's slippy I've got a tree attached to me. Try and get this tree out. Oh, it's getting interesting at least. Looks like every chance of me dropping the bike. We'll find out in just a second, I guess. Right, get it up to there, come back this way. Fans kicked in because it's getting hot, a bit like me. mud stops just there but would I manage to get through it I don't know is the answer but I'm nearly round oh. might get it on this one oh. There we go, back in, sliding all over the place. Now, I really wouldn't want to have done that on the Anarchy Adventures, because I would have had no traction at all. And it wasn't too bad on this, but it was a bit slippy. Given that I have this Irish adventure ahead of me in a week's time which I've been looking forward to and planning for quite some time I don't want to take any silly chances and damage the bike or damage me so I'll take us back along the way we came and then quit while I'm ahead hopefully if I get back in one piece it's a heavy old bike to be lugging around get out of these ruts if I could that's a bit better deep enough that it feels like the cylinder heads are scraping on the ground either side anyway I think that's the worst of it done and the sun is out how great is that Yeah, I'm not one for extreme off-road, not yet, my skills aren't good enough, I'm certainly not on a bike this heavy, but who knows, a Morocco trip or two under my belt and I'll end up an old hand at it.
Well, I certainly approve of the Northamptonshire countryside, it's beautiful. So retracing my steps, got to take a left here. Ball opens out a bit across the field. I've certainly christened my tyres. How beautiful is this? Absolutely gorgeous. I'll have to come back when it's a bit drier, I think, and see if I can do the whole length of this byway. It's my kind of green lane in. Just want it to be slightly less muddy on a bike this big. Are we having fun yet? Yes. Don't know how well the GoPro's picking it up, but the sunlight coming through the trees is spectacular. I can see little shafts of sunlight. It's beautiful. A green and pleasant, pleasant land, as they say. Let's take it a bit slow over this. It's all a bit rutty again. I want to stay shiny side up if I can. Ruts with squelchy mud in the bottom of them. Not a great combination. But the GS is taking it all in its stride, as I always say with these bikes when I tested the Harley Davidson, when I tested the Royal Enfield Himalayan, the biggest the biggest handicap with any of these bikes is me. Bottomed out there, sump bash plate where the rut crested. Oh, my arms will be pumped by the end of this. You can probably hear me breathing heavy now. I do not want to drop the bike. Well, I think these ties are going to do absolutely what I want them to do on the Wild Atlantic Way. I can't say that, Wild Atlantic Way. Here's the end of the byway. Right, before we completely get off of it, I will just say goodbye. So, thank you for joining me on this little off-road adventure quite mild by most standards but um enough for me on this big old bike uh it looks like the michelin anarchy wilds are going to do the job just fine and uh if you liked it please give it a like and subscribe i really appreciate it and i will see you in the next one bye bye